Good morning. Welcome to St. David's Episcopal Church. I'm Jocelyn Hughes, the rector, and it is so great to be worshiping together on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. You can download the bulletin for our service today from our website. The link is in the chat, and so the words and prayers will also be on the screen. So please pray and sing along from home as you feel comfortable doing. We will have coffee hour immediately after the service over on Zoom. And today our coffee hour will um, have another town hall forum. So we'll get to hear some updates from our treasurer, preschool director, music director, outreach ministries, and the Regather Task Force. So please join us there. Our outreach ministries at St. David's continue, and we're so grateful for all of your support in prayers and pledges. Again, thank you for being here today. And now let us begin. God is spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O oh God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy One is in our midst. Oh, come, let us worship. sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the sheep of His hand, though that
Let us say together Psalm 17, verses 1 through 7 and 16. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. <clears throat> Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart. Summon me by night. Melt me down. You will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your paths, my feet shall not stumble. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness. O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise up against them. But at my vindication, I shall see your face. When I awake, I shall be satisfied beholding your likeness. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on a hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you asked my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, A reading from Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. 
They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God be blessed forever. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is late now. Send the crowds away so they may go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over into the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. My friends in Christ, I speak to you today in the name of God who is <clears throat> our Creator, our Redeemer, and our eternal sustainer. Amen. A number of years ago, I was fortunate to host the renowned expert in youth spirituality, Mark Iaconelli, to speak at UC Davis. In talking with the students, he pointed out that we have this leader, Jesus, who wandered around, never really seemed to plan anything, rarely explains what he's doing or why, never bothered to write a single thing down, and to top it off, um, he was always going off on retreat. I mean, he was always trying to be alone, not to write a best-selling book, but simply to pray. Mark pointed out that Jesus was, by our modern standards, quite an underachiever. He had no goals, no strategic plan, no budget, no mission statement. He just hung out with people, and when he needed a rest, he took one. Such a different lifestyle from what most of his followers in the 20th century now lead, right? And this is exactly the portrait of Jesus we get in today's very famous gospel lesson. Jesus has just gotten the news that his cousin, John the Baptist, was killed. Instead of launching into funeral preparations or preparing some kind of official response, Jesus just wants to get away. 
He just wants time to grieve and be by himself. But the crowds don't allow it. They want him and they go after him. Now some might think, Jesus, this happens to you all the time. Wouldn't you have expected this by now? Like, I don't know, maybe you would have wanted to bring some bottled water with you or something, or maybe pick an amphitheater with a food court and a big screen TV for people to watch while they wait for you, right? But no, Jesus has no such foresight or event planning capabilities. What Matthew does tell us is that Jesus had compassion for the crowd. Do you know what compassion means? Passion means to suffer. Calm means with. So compassion literally means to suffer with. He suffered with the people who had sought him out. He felt their pain and was moved to help, whether he had all the resources he needed to do it or not. So this is pretty standard day in the life of Jesus stuff. The people come and so he heals them. But the disciples get nervous. They're in the middle of nowhere. It's late, people are hungry. And if they're not careful, the crowd is going to start getting grumpy. So they asked Jesus to close up shop for the day so that the people could head home and hit up the closest in and out for dinner. Jesus must have been pretty annoyed. He tells them, they don't need to leave. You give them something to eat. Yes, you. That's an important detail that sometimes gets overlooked in the telling of this miracle. The disciples want the people to go away, the community to be broken up because they don't consider the whole picture. They are concerned with themselves and their own well-being. They want Jesus to stop his ministry and get rid of everyone, but it's not Jesus' problem, he tells them. It's the disciples' responsibility to feed all of these people. Shocking, right? I mean, he's the Messiah after all. Shouldn't Jesus handle this? Shouldn't he take care of these people's hungry stomachs? No. It's not God's job to solve the problem that we are able to take care of, Jesus seems to be saying. Okay, fair enough. But Jesus, the disciples cry, we don't have enough. Just five loaves and two fish. So Jesus blesses and gives thanks to God for the food. And the disciples start sharing it with the crowd. And somehow, everyone eats and is full with leftovers. I say somehow because it isn't really spelled out in the story. It doesn't say more food magically appeared or bread and fish rained down from the sky. It just says everyone ate. So how did Jesus do it? How did this miracle occur? One of the most compelling theories I've ever heard about how this miracle happened is that because Jesus was willing to share what he had, others were compelled to share too. That the example of that Jesus set of saying, this is what I have and I'm going to give it to as many as I can, prompted others to pull out their snacks and share with their neighbor. So while no one person had enough to feed everyone, the community had enough to feed the community. So if this is along the lines of what happened, then the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 was not that Jesus multiplied 
five loaves and two fish, but that the people gathered were moved by Jesus's generosity and likewise shared with their neighbors. And not only did people share enough so that everyone was full, but there were a lot of leftovers. So on this reading, the moral of the miracle is that the community has what it needs. In fact, the community has more than it needs. It's not that God has to come in and do some sort of hocus pocus magic trick, but that we need to share what we have. On the other hand, perhaps this is a story about miraculous multiplication, that Jesus made food appear from nowhere and thus fed the multitude. I mean, Jesus certainly had the power to do that. But knowing Jesus and knowing his pattern and emphasis on relationships and community and his desire for people to take care of each other and to share what they have leads me to believe that magical multiplication is probably not what happened, but rather that radical sharing born out of radical love was the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. We are all called to stand in the disciples' shoes when they ask Jesus to send the hungry crowd away, and instead Jesus commands them, you give them something to eat. St. David answers Jesus every week through our food pantry ministry. Food is distributed to anyone who comes, and this ministry has continued through the pandemic. The director, Lynn, tells me that no matter how many people show up, they have never run out of food, that there has always been enough. That is truly miraculous and is a testament to what happens when we follow in Jesus's way of love. Indeed. As this story shows, when we do as Jesus asks, when the community shares what we have, miracles can and do happen. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Using the words our Lord Jesus Christ taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations. 
and your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. People form six. And priests, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Mark, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Susan, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, in the Anglican Communion, we pray for the new province of Alexandria. In our diocese, we pray for the clergy, and people of all saints san diego we pray for all of those on our parish prayer list <clears throat> 
We pray that you will give us the strength to meet the health crisis looming around us. Enlighten our researchers that they may discover the right treatments and a vaccine against this disease. Guide the doctors, nurses, and all medical technicians working with those who are infected to take correct actions for their care. Protect all medical staff and family or friends caring for those who are ill. Protect the essential workers and those returning to work. Bring together the governments and governmental agencies around the world to work together to eradicate this health threat. We pray for healing and racial justice in our country. Loving God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infects our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Please add your own prayers and your sessions, either silently or aloud. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen.
I reach heaven's joys, bright heaven's sun. Heart of my heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.